Hi friends, welcome to lecture 47 in our helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to start with momentum theory in forward flight. And I'm going to derive the expression for induced velocity in forward flight on the rotor disc. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, one of the things which simplified our life in vertical flight was that the typical environment around the rotor is symmetric. And this particular symmetry is lost in forward flight because the different parts of the blade, depending on the location they are at around the rotor disc, will see a different tangential velocity component. And this tangential velocity component varies not only with r, as in the case of vertical flight, but also with psi, that is time. And so essentially you have periodically varying tangential velocity, and therefore the rotor dynamics gets complicated. But today our focus is essentially on momentum theory in forward flight, and what we are going to do is calculate the induced velocity using momentum theory. And just like in vertical flight, we will assume that the induced velocity is uniform across the rotor disc. Now, while this approximation is reasonably good in vertical flight, it's not very good in forward flight. Typically, the way is quite complicated in forward flight, especially at low speed forward flight. But we will assume this for now. There are other models such as linear models and so on. We'll actually spend some time in a separate video discussing the wake. So now let us think about fixed wing theory. And the reason is that when the helicopter is in relatively high speed flight, the rotor can be thought to be a wing, which is essentially flying through the air. So now fixed wing theory gives us the minimum induced drag for a wing of span B. And this wing is flying at a velocity capital V and a lift of T is generated. So this expression is given by DI is T square by two rho A V square. Now, this particular minimum drag formula is obtained by presuming an elliptical loading on the wing. So this is a special type of loading which gives us the minimum induced drag. Now, if we try to use this formula on the helicopter rotor, we can consider the entire rotor to be like a wing. And then essentially A becomes pi B by two square, where B is the diameter of the rotor. And so we can write V, the induced velocity as Pi by T, that is V di by T. So from the previous equation in the previous slide, it becomes V is T by two rho A V. So physically, if you want to justify this approach, we can say that at high forward speed, the rotor wake is swept back in the plane of the disc. And this is quite similar to what happens in a fixed wing wake. And if we are considering momentum theory, the rotor essentially acts like a actuated disc, and therefore we could think of it as a wing. So now if we look at the expression for induced velocity in high speed forward flight, that would be V is T by two rho AV. And this is generally a good expression to use in high speed forward flight. Now for a rotor, the wingspan is the rotor diameter. So A is the area of cross section of the rotor disc. So A is equal to pi r square if r is the rotor radius. Now if we look at the second extreme flight condition, it is essentially when you are hovering. In that case, we have already derived V square is T by two rho A. So these are the two extreme flight conditions as far as a helicopter rotor is concerned. There is a zero speed flight condition given by V 
square is t by 2 rho a this is 0 forward speed and there is a high speed flight condition given by v is t by 2 rho a capital v where v is the forward speed of the rotor and this is a high forward speed now what we are going to do is find a expression which is valid in the regime in between these two extreme flight conditions and we are going to use momentum theory to do that and these two expressions will be useful to check out that general expression in the extreme scenarios so consider a rotor with a forward velocity given by capital v and we'll also presume that an angle is present between the free stream velocity and the rotor disc so this is generally the case because the rotor is tilted so the vertical component of this velocity through the rotor disc is going to be small v which is the induced velocity and the velocity which is going through the rotor and there's also going to be a tangential component given by v cos of that angle alpha so I will show both these in the next slide in a picture. So let's look at the flow through the rotor disc. So here you have the rotor. It's generating a thrust. There's a velocity going through it. Now, this is the forward speed velocity. And this velocity has two components. That is a vertical component given by the sign and the horizontal component given by the cos, which is in plane of the rotor disc. So what is going through the rotor disc is going to be this small v plus this capital V into sine of this angle. And I'm going to show why w is equal to 2v, just like we saw in the vertical flight case. So let's start with the resultant velocity. So you have these two components. So we square both these and we add them. So that gives us the resultant velocity, which is given by this expression. Now the thrust generated by the rotor is going to be m dot into the velocity in the far wake minus m dot into the velocity way up on top of the rotor. And that's going to be m dot w. And the power is t into the velocity through the rotor disk. And this is equal to half m dot the velocity in the far wake minus the velocity way on top of the rotor disk okay squared so these are the ke so we simplify this expression for power we get this expression here in terms of half m dot 2 v w sine alpha plus w square now what we do is we look at the first expression for power and we bring in trust is m dot w into this expression so i get m dot w into this expression here the velocity through the rotor disk and this is going to be equal to this second expression for power here so i equate these two terms now there is going to be a cancellation m dot is going to cancel out and also we will see that the term involving capital V is going to cancel out and so you are finally going to left with the expression W is 2V which we have also found in vertical flight that's very interesting that momentum theory gives you the same expression here in forward flight which you get in vertical flight so now let us take the resultant velocity through the rotor so remember the component through the rotor disk and the component tangential we square it and then we know that t is m dot into 2v because that's w w is 2v and so write this expression out okay where we use the fact that m dot is rho a u and this m dot is then substituted in the expression for t So now we obtain this expression for trust and before we proceed further let us check this expression for the two extreme flight conditions so we take the high forward speed condition its capital v is much greater than small v in that case you can see here the small v terms would essentially be almost zero we drop these terms and so we get t is 2 rho a small v into capital v 
and that gives us the induced inflow expression in high speed forward flight and that's the same as the fixed wing expression now the second case is capital v0 which is essentially no forward speed and that condition then gives us v square is t by 2 rho a which is the hover flight condition so we see that momentum theory gives you expressions which are valid in the extreme limits in both cases now there is no strict theoretical justification for this momentum theory use in this problem but one of the reasons it is used is that it works out very well in conjunction with most of the preliminary design problems as well as correlation with different theories so generally good correlation has been found between momentum theory results and measured rotor performance and vortex theory results and one of the reasons momentum theory is ubiquitous in preliminary design calculations is because it's very simple it gives us a simple uniform value of lambda which we can use in our calculations so let's finally get the expression for induced velocity in forward flight so let's go back to our equation for thrust which we had here and then we write v in terms of thrust using this formula now you will immediately notice that this formula is much more complex than we had in vertical flight first of all the term small v for the induced velocity is present on both sides of the equation and therefore this is going to become a non-linear equation now if you were to square both sides of this equation you are going to get a quartic equation which is going to be quite difficult to solve you may also get extraneous roots so typically what we do is we solve this using some kind of numerical method such as the newton raphson method now before we do that we will non-dimensionalize this expression we will express everything in terms of ct lambda and so on and then we will solve this equation in our next video so i will see you then